Good morning, class. Are you ready now to learn new things about science? Well, I got you. Before we start, let's have some warm-up exercise. Very good class! Kaya na-energize ang tanan na nawala itong mga duka. So class, are you ready for our new topic for today? Oh, very good because everyone seems like really wants to know. Now, can you read this? Photosynthesis. Very good. So I know a lot of you really wants to know what this photosynthesis is all about. Do you know class that photosynthesis help us a lot to breathe? It's because photosynthesis is the process that releases oxygen that we could breathe. So ma'am, how does the photosynthesis produce oxygen? Class, within the plant cell, the water is oxidized, meaning it loses the electrons, while the carbon dioxide is reduced, meaning it gains electrons. This transforms the water into oxygen and the carbon dioxide into glucose. The plant then releases the oxygen back into the air and stores energy within the glucose molecules. For the further explanations, let's deepen our topic. And by the way, class, now I have three stages of photosynthesis. First, absorption of light energy by chlorophyll. Second, conversion of light energy to chemical energy and splitting wa water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. Lastly, reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates. And there are also two stages of photosynthetic processes, which is the oxygenic photosynthesis and anoxygenic photosynthesis. So ma'am, unsa man yung oxygenic photosynthesis ma'am? So class, oxygenic photosynthesis refers to the photosynthesis that occurs in the plants, algae, and cyanobacteria, in which the final electron acceptor is the water. On the other hand, class, anoxygenic photosynthesis refers to a form of photosynthesis that used in a certain bacteria. Basically, class, the anoxygenic photosynthesis does not produce oxygen. And now, how do plants absorb sunlight? Class, plants contain special pigments that absorbs the light energy needs for the photosynthesis. So, what are those special pigments, ma'am? Those special pigments, class, are the chlorophyll. So, let me show you the picture. So, class, this is what chlorophyll looks like. Chlorophyll absorbs red and blue light to use in photosynthesis and gives the plants their green colors. Chlorophyll is a large molecule that takes a lot of resources to make. And by the way, class, chlorophyll also helps the plants to produce their own food through the photosynthesis. And by the way, class, when leaves lose their chlorophyll in the fall, other leaf pigments such as carotenoids and anthocyanin begins to show their true colors. While carotenoids primarily absorb blue light and reflect yellow, anthocyanins absorb blue-green light and reflect red light. Now, where in the plants does photosynthesis take place? So, photosynthesis occurs in chloroplast, as you can see in the picture, a type of plastid, an organelle with a membrane that contains chlorophyll and is primarily found in plant leaves. So here's the thing, class. Chloroplasts are similar to mitochondria. The energy centers of cells in that they have their own genome or collection of genes contained with circular DNA. As you can see in the picture, there are, uh, they have their own DNA. 
These genes encode proteins that are not essential in the organelle and, the, and to the photosynthesis. So, inside the chloroplast, as you can see in the picture, inside the chloroplast are plate-shaped uh, structures called thylakoids that are responsible for harvesting photons of light for photosynthesis. So, gamit kayo ang thylakoids, guys. Uh, I mean, class, for harvesting the light. So, class, the thylakoids are stuck on the top of each other and column known as grana. In between the grana is the stroma. As you can see in that picture, it's a stroma. The stroma contains an enzymes, molecules, ions, where sugar formation takes place. Ultimately, light energy must be transferred to a pigment protein complex that can convert to its chemical energy in the form of electrons. By the way, class, when the stomata is open, they let in the carbon dioxide. However, while open, the stomata releases the oxygen and let the water vapor escape. So, again, guys, how they can produce their own food. So, basically, with the use of sunlight and carbon dioxide, but to deepen your knowledge, I will explain everything. Their roots take up water and minerals from the ground, and their leaves absorb a gas called carbon dioxide from the air. They convert these ingredients into food. So, that's why they can produce their own food by using energy from sunlight. By the way, the, the foods are called glucose and starch. So, class, that's for all today, and I hope you learned something from me. And by the way, again, why does the photosynthesis is important? Not just for the plants, animals, but also for us. It's because it's one of the main reasons why we are still alive right now, why we are still breathing. And photosynthesis is also good for the Mother Earth because it, um, it, also, it can also, I mean, it can increase the oxygen in the atmosphere. Thank you.